Against the mountain ranges along the southern tip of Africa, there lie pockets of indigenous forests. Dominated by massive trees and dense understories, it is a piece of Eden. And flowing through one of these forests, the Kaimans River. Its water is stained dark by tannins and humic acids which have leached in from the indigenous Feinbos shrublands in its catchment and the water has poor light penetration but it is pure and rich in aquatic life. Various habitats are present from riffles with fast flowing water to calm pools. Vegetation such as palmite also dot the landscape especially along in-stream sandbanks. But how do we survey the invertebrate life in these aquatic ecosystems? In South Africa, we have the South African Scoring System, or SAS for short, at our disposal. And for those of us who are not experts in aquatic ecosystems, there is also the Mini SAS for a rapid assessment of aquatic ecosystem health. So how do we do the Mini SAS? We need a few things. Firstly, a net. For this demonstration, I will be using a net with quite a large mesh, but the finer the mesh of your net, the more invertebrates you will be able to catch. An old white ice cream container works perfectly, as it allows you to see the invertebrates clearly during the identification phase. And lastly, there are also a few information sheets we need. I will put the links to these sheets in the video description below. These sheets are the following. Firstly, a dichotomous key for the invertebrate identification. Secondly, an additional sheet with information about the invertebrate groups we may catch. And thirdly, the data recording sheet. Now, let's get started. Step 1. Find a suitable location. Beforehand, you will need to decide which habitat you will be surveying. Most importantly, decide and record whether you have a rocky or a sandy substrate or riverbed present. That will be important later. Step 2. Start surveying. During this stage, you can start by performing a few sweeps with your net through the water column and along the water surface. This enables you to catch any free swimming invertebrates. Next, start lifting rocks that you find in the stream. Hold your net downstream of the rocks you are turning over as that allows you to catch any invertebrates that are either being washed downstream or are fleeing downstream of the disturbance. Move your net along the underside of rocks you cannot lift up or along rocks that you do lift. If you have vegetation present at your survey site, be sure to sweep through the vegetation as well. Many invertebrates such as damselfly and dragonfly larvae are most likely hiding in the dense in-stream vegetation. Make sure to check your net often to see whether you have caught something. And if you have, remove any invertebrates you do find and place them in a water-filled container such as a clean ice cream container. When picking up rocks, it may be difficult to remove the invertebrates from it without harming them. Carefully pick larger specimens off with your fingers. With smaller invertebrates, you could try washing them off with water, or you could shake the rock relatively gently in your container to dislodge them. Perform these surveys for about 5 minutes in a variety of habitats at your site. You may find that you catch many individuals of the same species. If you are comfortable that they are indeed the same species, release the excess specimens. We will only need one per species for identification and recording purposes. Step 3. Identification Now that we have our specimens, it is time to identify them. Select an invertebrate. For our purposes, we will be looking at this little one. Now take out your dichotomous key and let's get started. With a dichotomous key, you start at start. You are presented with two choices, shell or no shell. Shell creatures include the snails, clams and mussels, which this clearly is not. So we move to no shell. The question now is whether legs are present or absent. Our creature clearly has legs, so we move on to that block. Now the question relates to the number of legs present. 
If more than three pairs of legs are present, we have a crab or shrimp, which again, this is not. So off to three pairs of legs we go. The next question relates to the presence or absence of wings. This could be tricky, as many beetle and bug larvae do not have wings clearly present. If, however, it looks like the picture, it is quite possibly a beetle or bug larvae. This one, however, is not. Next, the presence or absence of a tail. R1 does have a tail clearly visible. It also has an elongated tail instead of a tufted tail, so we can move on to that square. It also has three tails present, and this therefore excludes the stoneflies. Lastly, we have three choices, all relating to the presence or absence of external gills on the invertebrate's last body segment, the abdomen. If there are no gills present, we are looking at a damselfly. If there are plate-like gills present, we have a minnow mayfly. We, however, have feathery gills present. Notice how this little one breathes. So we are looking at the other mayflies group. Step 4. Recording the data. Now that we have identified the specimen, let us go to our data recording sheet. At the top, we fill out important information about our site, such as the water temperature and pH, if we have access to that information. We also provide a brief description of the environment and give the site's name and GPS coordinates. Next, we have a list of invertebrate groups. Here we can find the group we have just identified, the other mayflies group. Mark it with an X. We will get back to it in a moment. Step 5. Repeat the process for other specimens. Here we have a creature carrying armor that it made itself, using pebbles and sand grains that it found in its environment. Using the dichotomous key, we can identify this as a cased caddisfly. Again, we mark it on our data recording sheet and carry on. Repeat this process as many times as is needed to record all the specimens you caught during your survey. Step 6. Calculate the mini SAS value. When you have identified all the specimens down to their groups and marked them on your data recording sheet, tally up the sensitivity scores given to each of the groups recorded. The sensitivity scores are higher for invertebrate groups that are more susceptible to environmental degradation and therefore disappear from degraded environments and lower for those groups that are generally tolerant of degraded environments. During our survey here, we found specimens in the other mayflies group as well as specimens in the caddisflies and the damselflies group. Tallying up the 11, 4 and 9 gives us a total of 24. We now record the number of groups we recorded during our survey. In this case, three groups. And now we calculate our mini SAS score by taking the total score and dividing it by the number of invertebrate groups recorded. We have obtained a score of 8. whoop de doo but what does it all mean, Basil? At the lower section of the sheet, we have a sandy river and a rocky river column, based on the substrate present on the riverbed. We were in a rocky part of the river and compare our value of 8 with those in the rocky type column, figuring out where it fits. Our value of 8 is greater than 7.2, which means we have a natural or pristine river condition where the survey was performed. If we had a score of 6.9, it would fall between 6.2 and 7.2 and the river would have been in a good condition. And that is it. Perform a number of these surveys to get a better idea of your river's health. Note that there are many other methods of surveying river health that's used across the world, and the MINISAS only works for river ecosystems. For wetland ecosystems, a different approach has to be used. Thank you all for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, leave a like below and comment any questions you may have related to the surveying of aquatic invertebrates. Also consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon in order to be notified as soon as new videos are released. Until next time, stay safe.